journalist, presenter, and for many, public enemy number one. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top five reasons people hate Piers Morgan. It's fairly judgmental, isn't it? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the various reasons why Piers Morgan is one of the most polarizing public figures in the UK, and why many continually list him as one of the most hated celebrities in Britain. I demand my privacy. Okay, we won't talk to you again then. <laughs> Number five, everything is about him. There's no doubt that Morgan has shaken up morning TV with his brash and confrontational style. But interviews are primarily supposed to be about the views of the interviewee, whereas Morgan frequently uses them as a soapbox to air his own prejudices. Where do they? Where are any boundaries for kids, for instance, at school? If you can basically come in and say, I'm not a boy or girl anymore, what else can you say you're not? Viewers are often left irritated as he inevitably interrupts and talks over his guests on Good Morning Britain, in the seemingly self-centred belief that his viewers are forever interested in his opinion. Okay. I'm sure viewers will let us know what they think. Okay. Babies at maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. As usual, I suspect I'm not. They might be, but not all day, every day, at any given moment. And so, Pierce has often been branded as arrogant. He's certainly never been shy when it comes to blowing his own trumpet, however unwarranted or unwanted his ideas are. Let us know your thoughts. I already know your thoughts. Piers, You're all going to agree with me, not a, these two. It's a Virtue signalling clowns. Number four, he'll say anything to get attention. Morgan has freely admitted that he can be a hypocrite. He claims he's just putting opinions out there as part of his job, but his critics accuse him of stirring up argument for the sake of it. I don't think it's massively unreasonable for them to say we don't really want you in flats walking these guys or women I think the point to is, meet our meeting. It? And he does seem to thrive on controversy. Many of his more notorious claims have come in defense of, or are in some way linked to, American President Donald Trump, including his rabid feminist jibe after the 2017 Women's March. Everyone can keep screaming at me not to like yeah, Donald Trump. No. It's not going to work. Piers' apparent friendship with Trump has proven quite a contentious issue in general. Notably, after an exclusive interview between the two men aired in January 2018, Piers was condemned by the majority of viewers, with many believing that he had been too soft on the Donald. It was a big story where you are, but it was not a big story I where I, I am. I get that. Number three, he's relentlessly insensitive. There's a fine line between being straight-talking and outright offensive, and Morgan's critics claim that he all too often treads the wrong side of it. Maybe actors should just talk about the films and not get so worked up about politics. When he's not trying to out-bully Simon Cowell on TV talent shows, he's making Good Morning Britain guests cry, or taking to Twitter to tell depression sufferers to man up. I don't like the way that a stiff upper lip, manning up and all that kind of thing, has now become something to be offensive I to I don't people. think it is, Piers. <laughs> Bizarrely, he also seems to have made a particular habit of picking fights with women over behaviour and or outfits that he deems unacceptable. Susan Sarandon, Felicity Kendall, and Emma Watson have all been targeted because Morgan didn't approve of the clothes they were wearing, or not wearing as the case may be. Well, we can wear whatever they like, as yeah. can men, but when you look ridiculous, then it's entirely up to us to be able to say you look ridiculous. Number two, he represents the worst in tabloid journalism. As editor of the Daily Mail, Morgan was caught up in the infamous phone hacking scandal in the early 2000s. And while he denies direct involvement, investigations have found that many instances of hacking occurred under his leadership. Did, did you know that that was unethical? Uh, not unethical, no. Among the other lows of Morgan's editorial career, he once published a photograph purporting to show British soldiers in Iraq abusing detainees. But the images were later proven to be fakes, yet Morgan reportedly refused to apologise despite claims that he had put British servicemen at risk. He was sacked for the incident, but clearly it didn't hamper his career a great deal. Number one, he sold out to America, then came back. When Morgan started working in the US, he generally proved to be just as popular with American audiences as he was with British ones. That is, not very. You actually do a brilliant British accent. No, not really. No, 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 I don't. So, after hosting CNN's flagship talk show for three years, a time slot formerly commanded by the Reverend Larry King, he was axed because of disappointing ratings. If they start rambling, and being boring or obfuscating or just not playing the game properly, I'm going to get, in, get stuck into them and interrupt and get proper answers out of them. The news was widely greeted with dismay in the UK amid fears that Morgan would soon return to these shores. And sure enough, in 2015, he became a permanent co-host of Good Morning Britain. 
Today, he appears to enjoy a higher profile than he's ever had before, despite past failures and misdemeanors. How does he do it? To hell with this jazz. Whatever. Whatever. Shut, shut the door on the way out. Yeah, yeah. Go back to Wales. Well, that went well. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.